uh, this this video on Common Lisp. It's going to be a little bit of your 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 first steps in using Common Lisp and going through Hollow World to build a simple coin toss game. A few things you're going to need. You are going to need SBCL, which is Steelbank Common Lisp. It's going to be your interpreter. And I absolutely strongly recommend that you install SpaceMax. You're going to need Emacs installed first, which if you're using Linux, install Emacs. If you're using Mac, install Emacs Plus from Homebrew. And if you want to launch it using Spotlight like I'm doing here, uh, there might be a couple of bugs, so you're going to have to do a wee bit of Googling to find out how to make that show up. I can't remember what instructions worked for me. Um, and something like this would be appropriate, but your mileage may vary. Um, it was from 2014, so quite old now. Uh, you might need to do something with symbolic links. You know, um, I'll leave that for you to to figure out, unfortunately. Um, but both of these, uh, Steelbank Common Lisp is, is just using Homebrew. Uh, if you are ready and you've got Emacs, Remax Plus installed, Spacemax is simply a Git clone. Um, and you should be pretty much ready to go. I don't use Spacemax myself. I use a variant. Um called Doom Max or Doom Emacs and Emacs configuration for the stubborn Martian Vimmer. It's it's still Emacs at the end of the day, but it's got less packages, it's a little bit faster. Um, but I am comfortable editing the config files. Not everybody is, because this editor itself is written certainly in huge chunks in Lisp, and so the config files need to be edited in Lisp, and if you're learning Lisp, you probably want to learn how to build simple things first before having to configure your editor. So with all that said, let's get a simple um, Hello World going. Um, I've already set up a project, so let's, let's kick off Emacs. And I must say, if you're your VS Code user, I absolutely strongly recommend um, that you suck it up and install Emacs. Um, I used to be a Vim user, and I still absolutely need the Vim key bindings. I can't use editors that don't have good support. Fortunately, Emacs has excellent Vim bindings um, using the evil mode. Uh, so. I'm pretty much okay with this, but this gives me so much more power when I'm editing and, and working with Lisp code that it was worth installing this and getting to learn how to use it. So if you're working with Lisp for any amount of time, you're probably going to have to learn how to use a version of Emacs, even if it's not this version. So I'm going to open the file that I had ready. Give yeah, a second. Lisp, local projects, I call this coin toss source main.lisp. So you might have seen some stuff popping up at the bottom of the screen. Uh, let's get on to that. Uh, I'm going to make this a wee bit bigger for you to see. Hopefully you can see that. Um, don't worry about these three lines, this is to do with the packaging system that um, Common Lisp installs. We're not going to be dealing with packages in this video, um, so we can just leave those as they are. So, very simple, hello world. Um, I Something to, to bear in mind, even this early on, is um, by virtue of opening this file in Emacs, uh, in, in this version, Doom Emacs, uh, it has opened a package called Sly, which is an interpreter. Um, without me doing anything, because you saw me opening the editor and opening the file, 
it opened this um, REPL in the background, read evaluate print loop, and I can interact with stuff here. Uh, and it's like having a terminal for the language embedded there. But that's not all. Let's change this a bit. Right. I can send this line of code, execute it, and have the result appear here. Um, space M E F. And you can see that it's popped up there. And that's because there is a, uh, a binding between the interpreter and the code that you're using inside the editor. And so you can compile and run and test all sorts of code uh, without leaving your editor. Now, print isn't a great example. Um, a better example is format. Uh, the reason that appeared on the same line is, is what we had there didn't have the tilde percent sign. So as you can observe from here, we print hello world and then a new line. Common Lisp was uh, specified in the days before Windows and Mac were ubiquitous and there was dozens, maybe hundreds of different computer systems and operating systems. And it was a compromise between different versions of Lisp that existed at the time. And so uh, things that you might expect, like backslash n for new line, aren't what you think they are. So tilde percent is the new line character. Now we can do some so the other interesting things here. So a simple hello world usually requires a name. Tilde a is our interpolation character. So I can put my name in here. If I run this, I get hello Neil. And that is a value being interpolated on that. Now you can have as many tilde A's as you like. So if I do this, my name appears fully. Now, something that you, you're also going to need to learn about how to use this in your editor is... Um, let's make a deliberate error. Let's say that the string expects two values, but only give it one. We're going to cause an error. We run that. Error in format, no more arguments. It says there's a second tilde A here, but there's nothing to, to have a look at. There's nothing to, to pass to it. So let's drag this over a little bit. So you can see we're given three options here. Uh, we can abort in two ways, or we can retry. Now, retry might not seem to make a lot of sense right now. Until, and I can just move that along. I have a crap mouse. There we go. Uh, retry might not make a lot of sense until you realize something. Well, I learned something today. Let's abort this for now, and I'll demonstrate what this is actually doing. Because you can see that this is, has worked here now. Um, it's because we're executing one statement on its own. So let's, uh, let's write our first function here. Yes, you can have dashes in function names in common lisp. Uh, you can have basically almost any value you could possibly want, really. Um, now, I'm going to show you something here. We know the function is going to be called hello world. We've got the function common lisp user hello world is undefined. So let's uh, abort by hitting 2. Yeah, there we go. Um, 
but that is super simple to fix by pressing space M E F. You notice that hello world has appeared in the bottom here in uppercase. Uh, case doesn't necessarily matter in common lisp. Hello world in lowercase and hello world in all uppercase. Um, they're, they're treated the same. Uh, so if I do that again, it says that there is now a function called hello world. And we execute that. And we're going to pass in um, first name, last name. Uh, we're going to save some space, F name and L name. So because we made a change, we want to recompile that function. And we, oops, it says here warning redefining the function, which is exactly what we, we want to do. Uh, but that now means we need to pass parameters into hello world here. So I'm going to pass in Neil Monroe. And if I execute this now, we get hello Neil Monroe. Now, like I was showing you just a few seconds ago, if I delete the second parameter here, and again, I need to recompile that. We get a warning saying that it, you know, L name is defined but never used, and that's pretty cool. It also says there is a warning: too few arguments to format. Hello, and two of these. Um, so it's, it's saying that it knows there's a problem, but this is an interpreted language, so we can still run it. And we get that that stack trace we saw earlier. What we need to do is put L name in here. Now, again, the reach retry probably seems to not make much sense. I've changed the function, I'm going to recompile the function, you can see it says there. Now I'm going to try and hit retry and then it works again. What happens is the debugger stops, drops you into with a stack trace into a list of options that you can take advantage of and if you are able to you can edit the code that you're working on uh, recompile and, and fix up stuff and then tell the program to resume where it broke as if it was never broke in the first place. That is a super cool feature uh, and this is why you should really consider using Emacs or an editor that can truly take advantage of the Lisp ecosystem because you tend to not leave your editor and tab back into your terminal to run the interpreter, you typically have the interpreter running while uh, you're editing the code and it's, it's a living system. Now as I showed you, I was able to look into the uh, function namespace because functions go into one namespace, variables go into another and see that there's a whole world there. Now what I can do is if I highlight this and press space M E and capital F you'll see at the bottom here it's asking us to f make unbound hello world and that is basically asking us if we want to decompile and remove the function from the system which we've done and if we do this we get that error saying it's undefined so let's uh, abort um, so we can add and remove functions to our living system, but we want that. So let's, actually, no, we don't want this because we're not building a hello world. We're building a coin toss game, but this is just an example of how you work with common lists. This is typically a simplified version of, of how we might be doing stuff. Now, um, let's create our um, toss coin function. In Lisp, uh, comments are semicolon. Um, there is up to four. Um, really, it's the first one that causes the comment, but one means is usually reserved for inline. Four is usually reserved for like a description at the top of the file. Three is for something, and two is for something else. I can't fully remember, but it's a convention thing. So. Um, Really, it's just the first semicolon that creates a comment, and 
semantically, the number of semicolons typically means something. And we'll get into that in another video. But let's create our toss coin function. So as again, we do a defend, toss coin, it takes no parameters. Now, we're going to build this step by step. So uh, we're going to simply return a zero. Uh, and you'll notice there's no return keyword. Return keyword does exist in common list, but it's got a very specific use case that we don't need right now. Um, the last value of an expression in a function in common lisp uh, is the return value. So we can do toss coin. Let's compile this and add it to the system. You notice that we get zero here. Uh, let's change that to one just to show you what's going on. Let's recompile it. Let's rerun it. And we get one here. You notice that it's represented in many different number bases there as well, which is a fun fact. So let's put 16. Yeah, so uh, see this is base 16, so that's 2, um, octal 40 binary there. So I don't know why it does that, but that's it's a cool thing. Ah, we need that there. Now, the first thing we want to do is generate a random number between 0 and 1. And we're going to do that using... Um, let. Let is a way of creating a variable. Now, variables are usually bound to um, certain areas of the code, and it's not like JavaScript or Python where you just declare a variable and start using it. You need to create a space in which to use that variable called a let block. Now, let takes a list of lists, so we take our first list, and that list contains um, a two value list, or it takes n sets of two value lists, and those two values are name, in this case it will be a number, and a value that will get bound to that variable. In our case, we want to call the random function with up to two values, and because we're using random, we need to pass in an optional a value make random state true let's just shuffle this along to the right a little bit further if I can and let's drop that where did that go let's drop that one down so what we could do Uh, these are here for illustrative purposes, so you can see that um, there is a number that is bound to the value returned by calling random with two and making sure the random state is true. We create a variable called a, which is bound to the value one. We create a variable called name, which is bound to the value of Bob. And these are contained within their own lists of two values, and that also is contained within a list of these lists. So that's all that's doing. And again, there's a lot of parentheses. Um, the only thing I can say to you is you get used to it, you stop seeing it, it just becomes part of the language. Now, we're going to check and we're going to do format nil number is And we're going to recompile that up. Uh, and all we're going to do is we're going to return a string. Uh, nil will print it down here because that will be the return value. Uh, if we're using t, which we saw earlier, um, that will print it here. Because t behaves like a string, and by default, um, it will point to the standard output. And that's how our 
output was going over here. So let's run this. We're going to get number is zero. And we notice that we had a, a new line here, which is why it drops off and we close the string there. So let's do that again. So number is now one. Number is zero. You can see that it's behaving pretty randomly, which is exactly what we want. So let's uh, move that away. So this is uh, returning zero or one. So that's really, really cool. But what we need to do is have it return the string head or tails. Now common lisp has an if structure, and this is a two value thing. It can only do an, a true branch or a false branch. Um, if you want to do a single if check, you would use when. If you want to do an if not, you might use the unless. If you want to have th three or more branches, you would use cond. We'll not get into those in this video. We're just going to look at if. So that's the first thing. If the value of this, and again you'll notice that everything in common lisp is, it seems to have the operator at the beginning. Uh, that's by design. Again, might be a little bit weird. Again, just like the parentheses, you get used to it. Uh, this will be heads, tails, and that's, that's this function. That's all there is to it. We're going to use the behavior where um, a value is returned as the last expression. So we create this let block, we do this if, and it's either going to equal zero or it's not. So if it is equal to zero, heads is what's returned. Otherwise, tails as a string is what's returned. And again, we can see that here. Uh, make sure I recompiled that. I think I did, but... So we got heads in the bottom here. Heads. Heads. I love randomization. I have to keep hitting things until it works. And then we got tails. So you can see that this toss coin is returning heads or tails. That's our first function. Super easy, um, although it might look a bit weird, and the behavior might not necessarily seem intuitive, but that's that's what's going on here. The string heads or the string tails is evaluated and returned. So we want to have our prompt function now. And um, all we're doing here is we're going to print out what we want from the user. So let's format this, format T, because we do want this to go to the standard output. Um, now, something we have to do, um, just to make sure that our output appears. It's flush uh, force output. And that's just a simple function that takes anything that's been written to a stream and then displays it. Because what we're doing next is we are let um, guess. Yeah, because we're guessing. Read line. Sorry, excuse me. Um, what what we'd be doing is we'd be printing that to the stream, then we'd be waiting on standard input for read line. If we hadn't done force output, we would be waiting on streams, and it'd get a little bit complicated. So we're just being clear that we've printed something. Let's force make sure that's gone out to the terminal. Now let's sit and wait for some input. Um, now, we want to do another if. Um, actually, let's, let's be clear. In, in the previous program that I was working on in Python, we wanted to make sure that we were using all lowercase letters. So let's make sure that our guess is lowercased. Um, read line will always return whatever's entered as a string. So we can force that to be lowercase. And that makes life so much easier to do it at that point. Um, so we do if 
and we're going to do or. Uh, or behaves exactly the way you would expect it to, except it comes at the beginning, not in between two things. So if or string equals guess heads string equals guess tails we simply want to return guess otherwise we want to recurse and go back to the beginning of the function um, steel bank common lisp has tail call elimination so we can functionally return uh, we can recurse as often as we want without blowing our stack um, now let, let's unpack this this here you've seen the let before where we let number equal the result of calling random so we're going to let guess equal the result of lower casing whatever's read in from the terminal then we say if the guess is equal to heads or the guess is equal to tails we return guess Otherwise, we return the result of calling prompt. So eventually, one way or another, it's going to return heads, tails, or loop infinitely. Now, if you're having trouble reading this, um, it's not uncommon to see something like this. So you can see, or this, that. It's up to you, whatever makes sense. I'm going to leave it here for ease. You can see where everything maps up to. I'm okay with it like that. I'm also okay with it like that. So let's compile that in, and we're going to execute it. Now, because we're dealing with the editor, it's asking for some input here. So I'm going to say heads, and it should return heads, which it has. So if I run this again, I'm going to put uppercase heads, and it's returned lowercase heads. Let's put tails. It's returned tails, and let's say tails in lowercase, it's returned tails, as we would expect. So let's put ASDF, which is not what we want. It's just going to ask us infinitely for input until we put something it expects. So that function all appears to be working, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can also put doc strings here if you want. Um, so yeah, you you can have these here for some hints. So you've got you know, comments and doc strings, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, and we're, we're two thirds of the way there. All we really need to do now is our third function, which is the game, which once again takes no parameters. And all we're gonna do is if, um, string equals prompt toss coin, and let's let's again make this easier so you can read it. Um, because we're we're calling two separate functions here, so it might be a little bit weird to see. Then we want to return format nil you win. Otherwise format nil you lose no uppercase that just for consistency and that I believe is everything uh, because everything is all compiled up um, we don't have to use you know that and, and execute that anymore because this is a living breathing bit of code we can do game here 
So let's say heads. And I won. So let's do game. Tails. I win. So you can see um, there's nothing too crazy going on here. Um, so we can put this back to T actually. Because we do want to print it out um, to the terminal and that's what we're using. So let's just execute that again. Heads. New win. Oh, yeah, that's right. We get nil because the return value um, is nil. So we get that little side effect there. Um, so that's that's why. And there you go. That, that's all there is to it. Um, let's... Oh, yeah. And you can also inspect... Um, you know, th this is a return value, so let, that was you lose. Uh, you can see the stream there. So let's click on that. We've got a different, it's a simple array, it's a character of, of nine elements. Um, and you can inspect, you know, what things are made up of. So we can click that. No, that doesn't do anything. Uh, what I was going to try and do was actually just get rid of that and go back to our code here so you can see it all uh, and maybe shrink it down a little. Yeah, there you go. Um, and see that this is all there is to it. And I would like to think there's nothing too scary about common lisp in of itself. The syntax looks different, um, but that is by necessity. Um, you might think it's a crazy syntax. The reality is it's actually almost no syntax. Um, I've looked at abstract syntax trees in Python before, and they don't look too dissimilar to this. So Common Lisp is, is a way of um, using a dynamic language, um, but absolutely getting at how a program works and how programs are executed using branches and um, operators in the way that the compiler or the CPU might see it. And I think it's a nice language. I, I do genuinely like it. Um, and it's helping me think about how I program things a little bit differently. It's helping me consider new ways of working with code and I strongly encourage others to do so. And I hope this was informative. Uh, if it was useful, let me know. I'll try and do more. But uh, that's us done for now. And I will end the video here.